Very good morning, my dear friends. Myself, Dr. M. H. Chennaya, Vice Principal at Saptagiri College of Engineering, Bangalore, and former Principal at Dr. Shivakumara Mahaswami College of Engineering, Bangalore. Friends, I welcome you all to my session on this design of lab joint. And friends, in the previous sessions, I have taught you what a riveted joint is, what are lab joints, what are bud joints, how do the joints fail, what is the mode of failure, and all this I have taught you in the previous sessions. And in today's session, I am going to teach you how to make use of the data handbook to solve any problem on machine design. Friends, in today's session, as I told you before, we have got a problem on this design of lab joint which is double riveted and the arrangement of rivets is by chain riveting. So friends, in the question it turns like this, design a double riveted lab joint with chain riveting for riveting two mild steel plate, MS plates, 20 mm thickness, taking the tensile stress equal to 90 Newton per mm square the shear stress tau 60 newton per mm square and the compressive stress as 120 newton per mm square friends here before i start the actual problem i am going to tell you some clue how to utilize the data handbook and in the previous sessions also I had just given the hint that in all the machine design data handbooks used by the students across the globe you have a table of results of this riveted joint. In the sketch, they will give you about the type of joint, whether it is a lap joint or a bud joint, different uh, types of the joints, the shear strength, the tensile strength, the module, longitudinal pitch, transverse pitch, etc. Here, the moment you have a problem on a riveted joint, you should get into the data handbook and find out or search for the table where you have got full information about this double riveted lab joint. Friends, in today's session, we have to design a double riveted lab joint. So when I say design a double riveted lab joint, means you will have to find out for the given size or thickness of the plates to be riveted, what should be the diameter of the rivet, what should be the longitudinal pitch, and what should be the transfer pitch, what is the margin to be provided so as to prevent the tearing of the plate. Then you have to find out what is the efficiency of the joint and in what mode, the mode of failure. So all these are the parameters that you are going to design in any of these riveted joints. Friends, let us get into the problem. We are designing a double riveted lab joint. So I am going to write the top view of a double riveted lab joint. So here we have two plates. This is one plate and the other plate. This is the other plate here. There are two plates, one placed over the other and we are going to have the riveting made using two rows of rivet. This is plate number one, plate number two you can see. So I am going to have two rows of rivets. This is the first row we have got. One, two, three or four. We can take some number of rivets. It is a chain arrangement. So we are going to have in the second row, the rivet adjacent to the first row. I call this as row one or R1. And this is the second row of rivets that I call it as R2. So here the giant is a double riveted lab joint means there will be two rows of rivets R1 and R2 and these are separated by a distance called transverse pitch PT which is also called as the row pitch and here this will give you the longitudinal pitch P that is the pitch or the distance between any two adjacent rivets along the row this is also the longitudinal pitch this is also the longitudinal pitch. Friends here, after drawing this sketch, 
we have to find out first of all check what is the thickness of the plates given in the question he says it has got a thickness of 20 mm that is thickness of the plate to be riveted is 20 mm and since some data handbooks they make use of the notation t it's all the same the thickness of the plates to be joined or to be riveted is 20 mm and here a small procedure is to be followed that is we have to just check whether the thickness of the plates to be riveted is equal to 8 mm or greater than 8 mm so whenever the thickness of the plates is equal to 8 mm or greater than 8 mm there is a formula relating the thickness of the plates and the diameter of the rivet given by d is equal to 0 0.19 root h to 0 0.2 times root h where d is the diameter of the rivet to be used and small h is the thickness of the plate remember friends here both d comma h are in meter so that is very very important they are in meter so friends in this question the thickness of plate is 20 mm and hence we can use this formula d is equal to 0.19 root h to 2 root h so i just substitute the values of the thickness and i get d in meter so i am taking d is equal to 0.2 times root h say so d is equal to 0.2 times root h so 0.2 times h is the thickness given to be 20 mm that has to be converted to meter by dividing by 1000 so you are getting this value of d equal to 0 0.2828 meter means for this specification or to uh, just make this joint we need a diameter of 0.28 not to 8 to 8 meter or if we convert that to millimeter it comes to 28.28 millimeter because in all the data handbooks the values are given in millimeter so I have got the value of d is equal to 28.28 mm so friends when you go to a market if you ask for a diameter 28.28 it will not be available because across the globe throughout the universe there are some standards that are used and you will have a value a standard value or a standard size of the rivet available in the market and hence here if you refer to the data handbook uh, there in the data handbook there is a table which will give you the diameter the standard diameter of the rivet and also the corresponding hole dia so they will give you diameter of the rivet diameter small d and the corresponding hole dia dh so here we have got 28.28 and if you refer to the standard table you get the nearest higher value is 30 mm is the value of d and the corresponding hole dia the diameter of the hole to be drilled in the plate is 31.5 mm this is the standard value so in all the further calculations we should take the diameter of the rivet as 30 mm and the diameter of the hole to be drilled in the plate as 31.5 millimeter so we have got the value of the diameter of the rivet that is the first step as d is equal to 30 mm after completing or calculating the size of the rivet that is the standard size of the rivet we next calculate what are the different values of the pitch that is we have got two values of pitches one is the longitudinal pitch which is the distance between any two adjacent rows measured along a row so this is the transverse pitch and between the rows we have a transverse pitch which is also called as row pitch that is formalized there now we will have to calculate in the second step what are the values of p the longitudinal pitch the transverse pitch and the margin to be provided for these i think in the previous session i told you what margin is that is the distance between the center of a rivet to nearest edge of the plate this distance is called margin uh, from here to here 
it is called as margin so as to prevent the tearing of the plate friends let me tell you how to find out the longitudinal pitch p so to find out p friends here to find out p we have a procedure in machine design that is we are going to find out the shear strength of the rivets in one pitch the total shear strength of that in one pitch line that means whether you have got two rows three rows etc within one pitch length how many rivets are there what is the area of each rivet and what is the strength of that that is shear strength we need to calculate so here we are going to equate the shear strength of the rivets that is called as f tau to strength of the perforated plate which is called as f theta dash f tau is the shear strength of the rivets in one pitch length friends here you can observe here if you take one pitch length there are four half rivets half half one this is half one and half and this is half so in one pitch length friends you have got two rivets which undergo single shear that is i is equal to 2 in this case so friends how to calculate f tau f tau is the shear strength so you should have the total shear area of the rivets that is pi d square by 4 is the area of each rivet multiplied by i will give you the total area that is resisting shear and if tau is the shear stress value we are going to get this as i pi d square by 4 is the area of that multiplied by the shear strength is the shear load the joint or the rivets can be stand f theta dash is the strength of the solid plate sorry hollow plate or the perforated plate a plate where the holes are drilled that is in one pitch length we have got this value as p minus d into h into sigma theta or sigma tensile friends in the previous sessions if you just go through the videos we have given you can find out we have explained everything in detail how you get this value etc friends here let us find out what is p friends here in one pitch length i is half plus half half plus half totally there are two rivets which undergo single shear that's given by pi into d square diameter of the rivet is 30 30 square by 4 is the total area shear strength is given as 60 and if you equate that to p minus t p is the longitudinal pitch unknown 30 is the standard dia we have selected h is 20 mm sigma theta is the tensile strength friends if you equate these two that is the shear strength of the rivets to the strength of the perforated plate you will get the value of p and this works out to 77.12 mm so i am going to write down here this is going to be the pitch the longitudinal pitch is 77.12 mm is the longitude that this value is 77.12 next we will have to find out the row pitch or the transverse pitch friends for all the riveted joints which have got the arrangement of rivets in chain form this pt is given to be equal to 2d pt is equal to 2d that is 2 into 30 that is 60 mm so along with this in the same step we also calculate what is the margin to be provided so friends remember for all the joints lap joints or butt joints whatever may be the arrangement of rivets this margin is a universal value and is given to be equal to 1.5 times the diameter of the rivet so this is 1.5 times the diameter of the rivet is 30 so this is going to be 45 mm so we have got the calculations made for the longitudinal pitch the transverse pitch the margin so we have got all the required parameters for designing the joint friends after this calculation we have the other parameters like what is the efficiency of the joint so 
You know very well, there are three efficiencies, namely the Pratt efficiency eta p, the rivet resistance eta r and the efficiency in crushing is eta c. So uh, let me calculate these values one by one. So first is a, a is eta p, efficiency of the plate is universal again friends, this is p minus d by p. So this p that is to be multiplied by 100 as usual. So this value if you substitute p is 77.12 minus 30 diameter divided by this p is 77.12 and this works out to 61.0991. Friends I have told you this you have to go up to 4 decimal place of accuracy and this I have multiplied by 100 and this works out to 61.0991%. Next the second efficiency is the value of eta r that is the efficiency of the rivet. These values are straightly available in the data handbook in the chapter on this riveted giants. This is given by i pi d square by 4 into tau divided by pH sigma theta that is strength of the solid plate pH sigma theta. Friends you know the value of i, i is equal to 2 multiplied by pi by 4 into diameter of the rivet is 30 that is square then shear stress is 60 MPa divided by pitch 77.12 the thickness of the plate is 20 mm and then your tensile stress as 90. If you multiply it by 100 friends you get this answer as 61.105 percent. So we are able to find out the efficiency of the plate, efficiency of the rivet and finally we are left with the third efficiency is eta c. Eta c is the efficiency in crushing and is given by i times dh sigma c divided by pH sigma theta. You can just ask me how is that. So d into h is the area under crushing into i will give you total area under compression multiplied by crushing strength will give you the crushing load or the compressive load divided by the strength of the solid plate. And if you make the substitution here friends uh, you will get a value eta c is equal to 103.73 percent. Generally friends you should remember eta c will be higher than eta r and eta p. Friends for the given plate thickness and the diameter the rivet you used we are able to calculate three efficiencies. One is the eta efficiency that is eta plate 61.0991 efficiency of the rivet eta r is 61.105 and eta c this is or the efficiency in crushing is 103.73. Friends you should know by this time that the least of these three values of efficiencies is the efficiency of the joint. Here if you observe eta p is 61.0991, eta r is 61.105 and friends it is very obvious the least of all these three efficiencies is eta p which is 61.0991. Friends you can say here or conclude that the least of the three efficiencies is eta p that is the efficiency of the plate and that is the efficiency of the joint 61.0991 percent. Finally they will ask you to find out or you have to mention what is the mode of failure. Friends remember again I am just repeating if eta p is the least of the three values the mode of failure is by tearing of the plate. By chance if eta r is the uh, least of the three values then the mode of failure is by shearing of the rivets and if eta c is the least then the mode of failure is by crushing of the plate or rivet. So in this particular problem we have eta p as the least value that is the efficiency of the giant and the mode of failure is by tearing of the plate. Friends I hope and I am very confident that all of you would have followed the procedure followed in designing a double riveted lap joint with chain riveting and one thing I would like to mention here friends 
instead of this lap joint if you have a same problem with zigzag riveting you will not have any change at all excepting the transverse pitch pt which you are going to get will have a value equal to 0.33 p plus 0.67 d apart from that the number of rivets failing the diameter of the rivet everything remain the same friends if you are happy with the presentation i have made on this design of lap joint friends do subscribe without fail share the information with all your friend and remember this subscription will not cost you anything have a wonderful day this is dr m h chanaya signing off